uh, be here to talk uh, to you among this um, women uh, partner about it. Uh, so uh, I'm from um, Stevens Institute of Technology and uh, we do not everybody know where it is. So uh, we are in New Jersey, the cross river from Manhattan. Um, so uh, that's all the campers uh, and um, uh, they, they, I don't have a uh, pointer, but the, uh, we overlook the lower uh, Manhattan and uh, that was um, on the top, that was the old World Trade Center site. Uh, so uh, we have like, uh, uh, we are engineering school, we are a small private university with about 5,000 students. Um, and the School of Engineering and Science is the biggest um, school. Uh, I direct the Robotics and Automation lab, uh, Laboratory in the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering, and we have the, the you know, common use research robotics platform, including the uh, Pioneer Robots, Turtle Balls. Uh, and uh, of ocean engineering, they have um, the, uh, the, the uh, Department of Homeland Security, Center of Excellence. There are a bunch of people doing um, some um, uh, robotics related work uh, for um, ocean applications. Uh, and uh, the, at the bottom of the picture, that's uh, the tow tank um, and some um, underwater vehicles. I collaborate with them in that project. Okay, so uh, today I'm going to share with you some of our recent results on um, using marine robots to monitor the ocean uh, pollution um, bloom. And I'm uh, going to first uh, introduce the motivation and formulate the problem and uh, introduce our algorithm and show the simulation MATLAB, which is basically uh, validate the algorithm. And then we show the, uh, within the simulation, you draw the simulator. Uh, all right. Uh, so I don't think I need to say much about the potential damage of the recent deep water oil spill. Um, so uh, it's difficult to estimate um, the, to what extent uh, the damage is. Um, uh, so my collaborator, uh, Dr. Graham Bingham from Newport, Hawaii, um, uh, we um, got this um, NSI project to invest this program, invest this problem um, he, the picture on the uh, bottom left, that's a sensor uh, that's, um, you know, if you put the sensor, chemical sensor on the robot, it can detect the oil slick uh, values. Um, and um, uh, so the, the point is, uh, there in robotics community, we have many uh, smart algorithm, uh, but um, in the field test, there, there's a uh, missing gap uh, between the advanced algorithm and what they can really do in, um, in the real world problem, such as the marine engineering application. So um, we are fortunate to be funded um, by this project. <coughs> it's a 30 year project, so we made some progress. And I'm going to uh, talk about our um, progress. So um, the existing work um, on the uh, and the water uh, navigation, uh, if when we did the um, picture review, and existing method can be roughly categorized in three type of method: mapping-based approach, behavior-based approach, and control-based approach, which is in the next page. Uh, the mapping-based approach, basically, um, they first use the robot to build a concentration map of the environment and then track the flow. Um, and uh, uh, you know, obviously, the whole area has to be surveyed by sensors. Um, and we use a preview map um, to, uh, 
to navigate on. And the second uh, behavior-based approach is combine uh, certain elementary behaviors to try to bloom um, the drawback is no guarantee of converting in the works um, in many cases, but um, you know, uh, on the contrary, the control-based methods consider the dynamics it have provable correct algorithms that can guarantee convergence. Um, but almost all the existing work considers static bloom without the dynamics propagation. Uh, so we consider the dynamic propagation of the bloom from and we use the market to track the dynamic uh, uh, If we think about the uh, chemical pollution point source pollution in the ocean, the propagation has this physical model, oceanographic model, the so-called invention diffusion equation, uh, I put there, uh, which basically is a partial differential equation and uh, it's uh, model the process that uh, the, the bloom uh, will go with uh, water flow direction and also diffuse on the, on, on the uh, you know, tangent direction of that. Uh, and our goal is to deploy multiple robots that are going to track the bloom from, right? Uh, and the bloom from travels slower <coughs> than the speed of robot, so uh, it's, it's terrible. And in market robot case, we don't want to use all all communication. We want to impose this uh, nearest neighbor communication in a sense. We have a leader agent and an anchor agent with the first and last and all the other are follower agents. So it's only the uh, uh, neighbor to neighbor um, communication save the communication cost. Uh, what we do, we study the dynamic bloom tracking problem and uh, the main contribution, as I said, uh, we impose this dynamic uh, algorithm uh, and uh, we explicitly consider the convention diffusion model of the crew uh, model. And uh, our solution is an analytic solution without numerical, numerical um, solutions, so it's real time. <coughs> okay. Um, so I'll talk, talk about uh, some details about algorithm now. Uh, first, how we formulate the problem and we consider the robot model as a single uh, integrator. You may say robots are not single integrator model. That's true. But for many robots, uh, including the surface model, uh, the, the end and surface vehicle, uh, through a uh, nonlinear causing transformation, they can be transferred to the uh, single integrator model. And the bloom model, the second equation there is the intervention equation, uh, uh, diffusion intervention equation, which is the PDE, um, you know, solving PDE of their say, uh, the numerical cost computational resources, so we avoid solving that, um, uh, but we consider the source going uh, with that, and V, that uh, flow constant, K is a diffusion constant. And the, the third bullet uh, from 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 definition, what we track is this is defined by the CST equal to C zero, which means that uh, uh, we consider a constant concentration value as a flop, and this is time where it will move along the path, right? And we assume <coughs> with the robot can sense current position and the flow velocity. Uh, this uh, 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 common and it's durable. Um, they have a sensor to, to sense the flow and the robot position. Um, and uh, we assume the robot can detect the uh, chemical concentration CR at the robot place. Uh, for the gradient and the divergent gradient, which is the second derivative, uh, we may estimate it. Uh, although in, in this work, we didn't use the estimate value, but we could. Um, incorporate that um, in future work. So the problem for single robot um, tracking is to design control law to drive the robot track and control the boom from. Uh, so um, so it catch the boom from and and or move 
along the tangent direction of the, the proof. Um, and for Martin Hubbard, uh, not only Chi we want Martin Hubbard to even, evenly distribute along the, the home front of our actual values. Okay, um, so the challenges are, you know, without solving this uh, um, partial differential equation, how, 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 you know, how do you incorporate the model of the bloom? Um, and uh, for Marty Robert, uh, um, you know, we want to do both bloom from tracking and Pachowicz formation. Um, we do that through uh, estimator and control framework. Uh, I don't think I have time to talk about the, all the math, but basically the idea is uh, we don't know where the front is. Uh, the, but we can, based on the robot nitrogen concentration and robot trajectory, we can estimate where the we build the observer to estimate where the pool from is. And then we design control log and we will track the uh, pool from. So the general control diagram is on the right from dynamics. We have measured CR. If the measure or estimate is the gradient and divergence, then uh, it fit into the observer, uh, which estimate where the plum from is, then it, the xx is the estimated plum from. Then it uh, input into the controller, and the controller goes into the controller robot to track it. Um, so there's some math involved in it because it's a partial differential equation. Uh, it's it's definitely more harder than uh, uh, OB um, uh, model. Um, so uh, there are some simple um, uh, minimized approximation uh, and some um, mathematical operation on that. And I'm, I'm skipping this. Uh, I, I deleted my students' slides of five pages also here. Uh, and for Marty Robert, um, you know, with for the first and the last uh, robot, it's the same controller as a single robot. And for the polar robot, it has a formation controller terms so that it can even distribute between the first <coughs> and the last. So the first and last one will go at opposite direction on the home front. So they will meet. Um, okay, so this is a control law for the four-door robot UI and uh, okay, so uh, I saw the chair stand up, so I may have only a few minutes left. So the simulation, I first show the MATLAB simulation. Uh, uh, in order to do the simulation, you have to do the uh, environment, uh, um, uh, simulate the environment. And this has two parts. One is a uh, uh, flow field that uh, simulate the, the current flow. Uh, we solve uh, the, the, the so-called navier stokes equation with boundary constraints. For the bloom, uh, here uh, you see two sources, top and the bottom. Uh, the red of, of theirs has high concentration. Uh, then uh, in this paper, the black arrow are the current direction. You can see it, it could be uh, time warring. Uh, and uh, uh, to get the concentration field, uh, it's a numer numerical uh, solution of a partial different equation. You see the finite difference secretization in space and you look forward to the time. Uh, so, this is not part of the controller, but this is part of generating the simulated environment. Now, I'm showing the MATLAB simulation. Um, this is for one robot, okay, one source, S, S2 there, and the robot is a circle. So, so let me run it. So we can see the, the, the robot is the red circle. Um, it goes with the front. I think this is like twice faster than the actual um, red. 
And for the Marty robot, initially they are together. These are 30, or we can uh, call it 30, but uh, we have this force, and these are the Marty robot all together. And uh, you can see the red one are the first and last one, and the other, uh, the other two rectangle are the uh, polar robot. They quickly distribute between. Uh, the, the boundary robots. So we use uh, the all of them are uh, 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 can rigorously prove the uh, estimator controller converge. Uh, and uh, uh, the meta simulation is to validate the theoretical um, statement. Uh, but obviously, you know, in robotics, we got to do the experiments and uh, we simulate in the in a robot simulator and this simulator is divided by our collaborator uh, at University of Hawaii. They have this robotics lab, they call software platform, it's very similar as walls, use the uh, RCM and uh, it's a collection of hardware uh, drivers for time control process. And uh, on the top eight paper, that's the simulation mode. And the bottom is uh, the real time control mode. It's uh, uh, easy transit to the uh, the field uh, test. And the blue model, one typical, one main important thing here is that uh, you know you have a nice algorithm, but uh, where it work? It depends on whether your model is really. Um, consistent to describe this uh, real environment. So we have students studied uh, half year for this blue model and uh, to incorporate the, uh, some real world effect like wind or, or tide other um, effect into the model. You can see on, 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 on the picture here, this is a MATLAB uh, simulation of the environment which is ideal case, and then you can do some like particle kind of simulation, with, which is noisy, that, that's uh, more close to the real environment. Okay, the, the, the temporal uh, concentration, you can see it's more noisy. Uh, so use this environment model, we implement the algorithm in the robot simulator uh, using LCM, and I'm going to show the simulator um, simulation. Um, you can see successfully the single robot in green dots successfully um, control the room um, front. And for Marty robot, uh, uh, we didn't have a third robot, but we only simulate like three robots, they are together in this small picture, but actually they, 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 they uh, um, keep certain distance between them. Uh, the red, red line, if you can see it, if you cannot. Um, um, so, um, so uh, initially we thought we could do it in a control environment, uh, about the environment, for the environment, but uh, fortunately the uh, U.S. have a, a very nice on-site, uh, I mean not on campus, but inside, uh, site to fill tests. So they, they, they previously did the um, the the um, uh, real robot test in a harbor environment for um, uh, Coast Guard contracts. So so uh, they have a place to put the vehicle on the lab. The surface vehicle platform is what they build. And uh, um, I, the picture I took um, last year when I visited there, it's, it's a nice, you know, you don't have very rough current, it's, it's peaceful, uh, harbor environment, so we plan to be talking about the experiments and working for uh, few tasks. Uh, so I conclude here that uh, we consider the corporate tracking of the dynamic ocean bloom. We explicitly consider the bloom Propagation model, and um, uh, we designed the estimator controller um, framework, and um, uh, we did simulation like that, and also in the uh, simulator. Okay, so uh, that's all for that. We refer to the 
Rafinman at the UH and the uh, right picture of the students with some of uh, his school students visiting us in the summer. Okay, that's it. Yeah, the follow the controller for the follow. 